Hello and welcome to another episode of Subes on Stuff. The stuff in today's video will be an unboxing and commentary on the Cumberland Float 2. For a full disclosure, this is my first attempt at video and sound editing, which I know will get better with time and with your support. So I hope you enjoy this video and leave plenty of comments down below. Alright, so we'll start off with the full name. Cumberland Float 2 with a raised, extra comfortable seat. And let me tell you, it's raised enough to keep your butt dry and comfortable enough to fall asleep a few times in. It's almost like floating on a Lazy Boy recliner. The dimensions of the box it comes in is roughly 13 inches wide by 20 and 3 quarters tall and 23 inches long. I've been thinking on making a storage case for it when the box eventually gives way. By the time this video is uploaded, it will be over a year and a half since these scenes were filmed. Long story short, I've learned the hard way that you should always make copies of everything you do and keep them until the project is completed. For a solid nine months, I thought I lost all of this video in a file transfer mishap, which was completely my fault. Luckily, I found a compressed file just into the new year. Now, obviously, the float tube comes inside the box, but who would have guessed it comes with other things, too? The first thing we got here are two PVC tubes that act as your bib backboard and your front end structural support. It also makes for a great leg rest. You'll notice that the end of these are cut at an angle to help fit snugly against a rounded tube wall. The next thing we'll pull out is the bib itself. I'll go over it in greater detail later on, but it's far more useful than I thought it would be, and it saved many koozie covered cans from jumping ship and getting lost down the curve. Additionally, you get a manufacturer's certificate of origin, owner's manual with both English and French sections, and a pack of pontoon bladder patches with instructions. Let's take a look at the float tube itself before inflation. It's easy to unpack and refold for storage, and if I do end up building a case for it, I'll have to do some research and what material to build it out of. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on this or which materials I should use. Behind the seat in a sizable storage compartment are the zippers which give you access to the pontoon bladders. The zipper, external fabric and stitching, and the bladders themselves all feel very durable and consistent in quality. Both bladders are velcroed together which helps with consistent inflation and prevents kinks. Additionally, the bodies of the bladders are velcroed to the external fabric to ensure inflation valves are lined up correctly. Now let's take a look at these bad Larry's, the good old Boston valve. This sucker allows one-way airflow when inflating with diaphragmal magic and lets you release all that air with the power of counterclockwise rotation. Located on the sides of each armrest pocket are two D-rings to allow for all your dingles and dangles to be attached securely. For other things like fishing poles or kayak paddles, some Velcro strips are located on the cockpit walls for easy access. On top of each pocket comes a cup holder that can fit cans as well as my Yeti. Dual zipper top provides easy access to all contents as well as the hull ID number. Of course, we can't forget about the warning label. Below the side pockets are grips that second as attachment points and the buckle for the backrest angle adjustment. The hull ID number is also located on the back of the float for all your hull identification needs. Behind the seat provides access to the giant foam blocks that are in fact what makes up the seat itself. They are hidden behind this flap and fastened by three velcro strips. To adjust the seat back angle, each side has a strap and buckle as shown before. If you like having good posture, I won't stop you, but I personally recline the heck out of it. You have options is what I'm saying.
In case the rear storage section wasn't enough, the back of the seat also has a spacious mesh pocket with a bungee tightening cord. There's also a slot for a flagpole to run up your pirate flag, if that be your fancy. Alrighty, now let's blow this thing up. Using this hand pump, each bladder takes about 3 minutes to get fully inflated. While this happens, the side pockets start to take their form and I've created an interior structural panels for the pockets which I'll show in an upcoming video. I'm sure there's a specific pressure you're supposed to pump these to, but I just give it the old squeeze test so it feels right. Obviously overinflation is a risk, but the fabric shell is perfect for keeping it all contained. You'd have to be a plum fool to pop this thing. Mm-hmm. Nice and tight. This side feels pretty firm too. Just the way I like it. Now let's assemble the bib. We'll start by aligning the angled ends of the PVC pipes to the same orientation. Unfolding the bib, a measuring strip is printed on the mesh for both inches and centimeters. If you catch something longer than 18 inches, I guess you're just going to have to guess at that point. But nobody's going to believe without pictures anyway. On the left side of the bib is an opening for the PVC pipe to slide into. I'm thinking on sanding the edges down to prevent snags and tears. So you slide it in there and seal her up with more conveniently placed velcro and it's ready for installation. For proper fit, rotate the pipe so the angles face downward and fold the sleeve tip over to be slotted into the left side sleeve pocket. Might as well insert the other side while we're at it. That is how it works after all. Each side of the bib has a velcro strip that attaches to its companion on the side wall of each pocket. The red pole tabs do make it easy to attach and unattach for easy entry. My only gripe with this bib is that there isn't a way to attach the velcro ends to where the pipe is. Sometimes I just don't want it up and it hangs in the water. Oh hey, looks like I caught a lammy. What a perfect way to test out this bib measurement. Alright, let's take a look here. Looks like he's about 14 inches. Now let's take a look at the underside. The material it's made out of is designed to resist sharp sticks and rocks and is pretty durable based on my time using it. There are four D-rings here which include an adjustable strap that can connect transforming this flow tube into a stylish backpack. Now that we've gone through all the ins and outs of the Cumberland flow tube, I suppose this is the part where I tell you the pros and cons and show you some footage of the tube in action. I guess I'll start with the cons and get them out of the way, and in all honesty, I can't really find any. Even when I accidentally broke a clip on one of the straps, the customer service team gave me a replacement set of two straps in less than a week and it didn't cost me anything. Unfortunately, all the footage I shot for the tube in action has been sacrificed to the file transfer gods. So all I have for you is this one clip from its maiden voyage on my local river. If you're interested in seeing a video on the tube's capabilities and how I set mine up for various activities, let me know in the comments. If you're in the market for a float tube for fishing or river floating shenanigans, I would say look no further than this puppy. I bought mine on June 10th of 2022 for $237.79 off Amazon, and as of the day I recorded this, the price is now at $218, so you're getting a better deal than I did already. I've included the link in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope it's been helpful for anyone out there doing research on float tubes like I did before getting this one. If you have any questions about the tube or anything that I can help clarify, please don't hesitate to put that in the comments too. If there's other stuff that you'd like to see me make videos on, tell me about it since that's kind of the whole bit for my channel. I'm Alex, this has been Subes on Stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the day everybody.